So for the sake of time in this video, we are only going to be focusing on our focus standard for unit four as we work through unpacking this unit. With that, our focus for unit four, looking at our documents, is NF1. So if we want to start with unpacking that standard and get our ICANN statements written. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the whole standard says add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, including mixed numbers, by replacing given fractions with equivalent fractions in such a way to produce equivalent sum or differences of fractions with like denominators. In order to keep this kid friendly and to break it apart into the smallest pieces, I think we need to look at saying I can add fractions with unlike denominators first versus throwing in the mixed numbers or do you think it would be beneficial to just keep fractions and unlike denominators? <laughs> I think incorporating the fractions with unlike denominators I think would be beneficial just um, so that there's that umbrella of this is where our goal is instead of it being the first one where it's the fourth grade standard of adding those fractions. Um, so incorporating the unlike denominators in that I can statement. Okay, so I can add fractions with unlike denominators. And then that mirrors too with the first um, piece of that um, <laughs> the um, go math lesson too because they're right, jumping right into unlike denominators. Okay. Do you agree, Ashley? Keeping the unlike denominators in right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, I can add fractions with unlike denominators by replacing given fractions with fractions equivalent with fractions. Equivalent fractions. Mm -hmm. Sure. I guess that keyword word would be replacing. Mm -hmm. So taking over and then we did discuss well we'll talk about that later then when we were discussing uh -huh. reducing the fractions yes so then the next piece with that they have including mixed numbers so that we can keep it separate for when we are looking at interventions um, if we want to say I can add fraction or I can add mixed numbers with unlike denominators so then we have them separated that way we know if the students are struggling specifically with just fractions or maybe the mixed numbers mm -hmm. piece is difficult. And then I would say we would end up doing the exact same thing but with the word subtraction since it's add and subtract. Mm -hmm. And then do we want to add anything with um, estimation? I know that with one of the target pieces for knowledge students will know it has estimation as a part of it. I don't know if you want to incorporate an ICANN statement with estimation. Which standard? Is that the big uh, It's uh, NF2 has estimation. To estimate mentally and assess the reasonableness of an answer. I don't know if we want to include that with the ICANN statements or if we just wanted to focus just on that focus standard. Uh, let's just focus on the focus one for this and then we can unpack that one okay. next. So the last two of the ICANN statements are going to look the exact same, but we'll have the word subtract. Okay, so I can subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators by replacing given fractions with the collision reflection. Mm -hmm. So we've unpacked all four, well, all of the pieces with that. Do we, do we want to include something about the strategies they use since NF2 is a major standard using visual, like she was saying with the estimation? Well, because with the assessment, it's a lot of modeling. So one of the, mm -hmm. each of the questions have like, I can model right and show my equation, so I don't know if we wanted to unpack enough to right away to be able to successfully look at the assessment. Um, sure. Because each, I think it's like three of the problems are. Yeah, NF2 we have in here, 
Um, all the pieces that are broke apart are down below it, and oh, so perfect. you have, I can solve word problems involving the addition of fractions referring to the same whole with like denominators by using models or equations. Um, and then it's the exact same, um, I believe needs to say subtraction. Oh, thank you for putting those in there, but that was... Yes. So that then we ha do have that focus because it is using words, numbers, or models is huge on a majority of the questions. Which I don't know if we want to jump to looking at the assessment now. I feel like it is confusing if it's, is it they can do one or the other or is it like they have to, I'm trying to find. So I would say because it says and or, I would think it's one of them. So okay. if they use words, numbers, or models, they'll be able to meet the proficiency. I'm just worried about some of those students who, when they take the assessment, they're going to be confused of, well, what do I need to do in order mm -hmm. to get points? Do they need to do all three of those? So then maybe we add in here with our lessons to utilize section. Maybe we put a note in there to make sure that we utilize the same vocabulary mm -hmm. and explain it to the kids more specifically so then when they do see it on the assessment, they won't say I need word numbers they're, and models. They do, they are required to do one, yeah. so they're required to do a, a model and they're required to write an equation. Number six, um, part A, so use a model to show your reasoning. But the rest that they, mm -hmm. they can pick. So we will use the unit test directions. words, models, and or numbers to make sure the students understand the directions. Which then they change one of them to from words to equations. Um, so adding that in there too. Okay, so we're going to add a focus to models as they need it for question six. If we're on the wording piece for question number six, uh -huh. I don't know if you looked at it, but the wording is tricky. So they, like Pat and Terry, are sharing the apple, and then Pat ate one third of the apple. Terry ate one fourth more of the apple mm -hmm. than Pat. So how much did they eat all together? So making sure that we're providing that similar style word problem for students to see that more of that piece so that they know that it's... They need to add those. Pieces. Well, not just that, but knowing how much Pat ate, and then Terry ate one fourth More. additional of that apple. Well, no, it's how much Pat ate, and then adding Pat to what they ate, mm -hmm. one fourth more. It's a multi-step. Correct. Yep. We can do that. So, what is our word problem? Because that's what we utilized the last unit was the lessons that had word problems, and we reworded them to meet the verbiage within the unit assessment in DCAS. I don't even know if there is like a word problem chapter for unit six, um, unless I'm mistaken, but I didn't, when I was flipping through, I didn't see and like a specific section like they've had. So there's, um, yeah, normally there is one, but it doesn't look like there is. Nope, problem solving is 6.9, but, and that's, just straight practice with addition and subtraction. So we could work on, when we utilize lesson 6.9, we could maybe take, rather than taking an entire day to do that lesson, we could add those to our daily lessons mm -hmm. as they yeah. fit in and reword them. Along with those released questions too that relate to it, and maybe wording some of the questions, keeping the content and the, the rigor of the question, but maybe wording them to match the assessments, but then maybe keeping a couple the same so that they're prepared for their next intro. Yeah. Okay, so I have that lesson 6.9, we're going to recreate the problems to match the unit assessment format as well as DCAS, and we will use those problems throughout the unit. Before we get any further, we probably should stop because a lot of these have to do with vocabulary questions. 
and look at what our vocabulary is for this unit and see if there's ones that are in the framework planning tool or the unit assessment or DCAS that require them to be able to understand what they mean. So you have the tier two and tier three vocabulary. Looking at, you have some again, so some is gonna be just one of those recall word, vocabulary words within the assessment. Uh, we have expression and evaluate, all words that we've had. Sure. Oh, go ahead, Ashley. <laughs> Expression. You're quicker than me. Evaluate. Some. Some. I would say equation. And we can then also hit, again, the differences between an equation and an expression, since that is in every mm -hmm. unit we have. A line plot mm -hmm. that's going to be huge. Line plot. I mean, you, total would be a understanding piece of what you need to do for your operation. Yes. Um, that would be from just the assessment piece. On number five, it has evaluative. I think we're going to have to mess it. Says evaluative the expression. I think it should say evaluate, so we're gonna have to put in a correction for that before um, we give it to the kids. We're gonna have to also do a correction for the numbering of the problems. I don't know if you noticed that either with problem number one, and then below it is problem two, but I don't have a number two on mine unless I just printed it wrong. But number two is the evaluate the expression. Part A and part B. Well, then where's number three? So that's that, a good question. I think number two is labeled incorrectly. I think two is supposed to be a, above the box with the evaluating this expression yeah, of it two should six, be because this says number three is A and B. So we will have to get those corrections made. So problem three and then three and then the three problem has two, parts. two should be up above. Yeah. Okay. We can get those fixed as well as the verbiage on problem five. I should say evaluate and not evaluated. And then looking back at the vocabulary, I feel like we need to touch on the word reasoning because that's in number six so that they can understand they're using a model to show their reasoning. That way they understand what is their reasoning. What are they? So reasoning and then also modeling. Mm -hmm. So looking at that, I don't think there's any other vocab in the actual unit assessment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not actually in there. What's the vocabulary that they're going to need to know then outside of it? Right. But we will have benchmark fraction. Uh, common denominator. Which, would that, are we doing least common denominator and easiest common denominator? Is that something? We will, I believe, when they get to, so they're going to use common denominator because they're going to have unlike denominators and they're going to have to make a common denominator. And with that, they're then going to have to look at like the least common multiple, which they have multiple in here. Common multiples under tier three. Common multiple. Yeah. Common denominator, common multiple. Equivalent fraction Equivalent. expression we already have in there. Mixed number. Numerator. Operation. Parentheses. Um they say symbol in here, and I don't see why we need the word symbol unless they're relating that back to a variable, which I think would be the better word choice. Maybe they mean like symbol with like the line plot and the X's. The X's up above, those are symbols and not variables. That yeah, would be maybe. a good connection. Or do you think we're talking about the fraction bar itself? Because when we get into doing this, like they have to realize that this is another way to demonstrate dividing. They might, because in here they also have fraction bar. 
as okay. a vocab word. Mm -hmm. So we could relate that to the fraction bar and the x's in the line pot. Um, and then we have the regular compose, decompose, evaluate data set. Data set is going to be a new one that they're going to see mm -hmm. that we haven't dealt with yet this um, school year. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, in science we have. Yeah. But that would be the only relation. Not in relation to math, but we could make that connection when they are gathering their data in science. They're doing the same thing in math, but it'll just be in terms of numbers and not an experiment. Um, the only other word in here is simplest form, which I know right now is a big debate. Um, I know from experience last year unpacking, it is not in our standard. They specifically say it's not in our standard and that we won't be assessed on it, but there are questions in DCAS where the multiple choice answers are nothing but the simplest form choice. So in order to even get the correct answer, they have to put it in simplest form. It's interesting because the very first page, which is like a review of fourth grade, it has write it in simplest form. Mm -hmm. And it has the fourth grade standard. Yeah. All for in the clinical math? Yeah. So even though our framework planning tool says not to utilize simplest form, that it is not an expectation, how do we want to address that with our kids? Because we're going to hit a brick wall again with the kids that lack those multiplication fluency pieces. Mm -hmm. And just being able to find simplest form is going to be a process in itself and you're timed on DCAS. So could it be a part of the enrichment groups that we have for so for grouping and that could be one of the enrichment pieces is teaching them simplest form and showing that they are equivalent fractions? We could do that so we could start with the enrichment kids. My only worry is if we only show it to the kids who need enrichment we would be doing a disservice to the rest of the kids if they have to do it. But if we get our high flyers to figure out simplest form, that is also more hands in the classroom to support mm -hmm. and work with peers in like small that. groups. So I like the idea of throwing in simplest form with, with our high flyer kids as an They do use too. least common denominator within Go Math, though. Mm -hmm. So do we want to add that also? Sure. sure. It also says it's like find the difference, write your answer in simplest form several different times. Yes. So I would say maybe when we start, we don't penalize the kids for not putting anything in simplest form, especially because it's not in the standard. But still try, like you said, start with the enrichment and get the kids going with it. And then maybe as we work through the lessons and they get comfortable just coming up with a common denominator to add and subtract, yeah. we can then move to simplest form. Um, as far as getting kids ready to even find a common denominator, I think it'd be very beneficial to look at throwing in like an intervention or just even a small mini lesson over multiples and mm -hmm. being able to let them understand you've been doing multiples since kindergarten when they're learning to count even just by ones and then when they move to fives and tens and twos that they do have the skills so if we make that connection to multiples is like skip counting we can try and build the confidence up there. Yeah. As we get into it. And take some time the first couple of days to be able to do that even before mm -hmm. you launch into adding fractions. So do some mini lessons with skip counting. Um, there's that game. What game was it? Um, uh, sparkle. Sparkle. Do sparkle as a brain break. Sure. Show. There's a brain break. 
So then if we look in Go Math, which lessons do we feel are the ones we can utilize as our Tier 1 instruction versus which ones would be maybe more beneficial to keep simply as like the Tier 2 reteaching or intervention pieces. So Lesson 1 and 2 are both the Investigate. Mm -hmm. So they even have Lesson 1 and 2 within the un um, unpacking document as one piece. So if we could combine them. I mean, those would these would be a pieces that relate, but having it in a couple of days, but easy crossover because you're finding that like denominator. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think once we teach, we've been doing so much inverse operation. I wonder if we could then start incorporating the two because they should mm -hmm. be able to function, like you said, doing both addition and subtraction. Um, so in combine lessons six one and six two together. I think that would benefit of them just to okay. be able to check their work. What do you think, Ashley? I don't. I worry that some of the high flyers are going to because it's like using models and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if this is more tier two than tier one because it's like using the fraction strips to show the equivalency. I feel like that's gonna. Well, I think that it's we could do just like what we did with the models with um, decimals. De decimals, right? We did models, and then we also did just um, the standard. standard form. We could do the modeling piece, but then also on the side teach um, finding like denominators, and then going from there. Yeah, so maybe we can combine it and give the enrich piece to the high flyers. Are there ones in six one and yeah. six two that they could simplify? And we could start the introduction of simplifying them and give them their enrichment there. So within their examples, it gives them like improper fractions that they have to simplify. Okay. Um, but even this investigate piece, it says in simplest form, answer in simplest And even form. their homework says in simplest form too. So we're going to probably have to do a lot of rewording of directions within mm -hmm. Go Math so that we don't end up with upset students. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in here. Reword the directions, at least in the beginning. All right, so so far I have that we will use the unit test directions in our lessons with words, models, and or numbers to make sure the students understand what it means. We're going to add a focus to the word models as they need it for question six. Lesson 6.9, we're going to utilize, but we're going to recreate those problems to align with the assessment and DCAS and use them throughout the unit. Then we're going to do mini lessons with multiples, and we could even use Sparkle as a brain break. We're going to reword the directions from GoMath using simplest form in the beginning. How long do we want to give them? to not do simplest form before we again try to introduce it to everybody. Can we spiral back to doing mixed numbers? Or not spiral back, but we progress forward with mixed numbers. So maybe the first two lessons for 6-1 and 6-2, simplest form not required, but then once we start having mixed numbers, maybe making it into the simplest form? We could. As you were talking, I was just thinking, we have because DCAS is where they're required simplest form, right? Mm -hmm. We have units four and five in DCAS. So what if we don't push simplest form for addition and subtraction, except for with the kids who are ready for it, and then really throw it in at multiplication and division so that we can focus more on coming up with a common denominator. I just worry about overwhelming those ones that mm -hmm. struggle with the multiplication piece. We could do factors and start throwing those in as interventions throughout Unit 4 in preparation for simplest form. Yeah. That just affects me. That way they know how to find a factor in order to get the simplest form. I think that's a good idea. And then what we can do is we can just like say that we'll save simplest form for multiplication and division, but then once moving forward, we can discuss and see where our students are at, if they're ready for it. If Maybe sooner, not, yeah. Um, we're adding and subtracting. Is 
anybody have any good tools for factoring? <laughs> Not off the top of your head. Just mm -hmm. doing the, for finding the, uh, the least common denominator, just doing the grid, like with the numbers. Okay. But I have no other strategies. You guys are more of the math people than I am. I've done like factor trees with the kids and started off with like mm -hmm. those more common, like lower numbers um, and built them up that way, but I don't really have any tricks for that. So we can use factoring. So maybe fourth grade, because that is in the fourth grade standard, um, finding factors and multiples. Maybe fourth grade will have something we can utilize for the intervention of it. Yeah. Factoring lessons. Fourth grade. What do we think about lesson six three of estimating fraps and sums and differences? So I don't think they're gonna have to estimate on this assessment, but it's part of what N NF2 they have to estimate. Right. Estimate to see. I feel like this would be better for an RTI piece. Lesson three? Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but my high flyers do not want to estimate. They want to know mm -hmm. what the exact answer is. But my low kids might be able to use estimation to help them like eliminate answer choices and, and the no reasonableness reason. of their answers. Yeah. So I would agree, and it would help our kids from like we had rounding and estimation on interim one. I feel like when you're estimating, it's so subjective because mm -hmm. it, it's just difficult to, especially to teach that because it's just so subjective. So to estimate mentally, so they have to use the benchmark fractions or a sense of numbers in order to estimate mentally whether or not they have a reasonable answer. That one I feel like is a difficult task that maybe our lower end students wouldn't be able to do because if they're going to look at like a benchmark fraction and they're going to draw something out. I mean, I feel like we do this, we don't necessarily estimate before we solve, but we do this anyways, right? We look at our answers and we discuss, is this reasonable? Mm -hmm. And I, so I feel like devoting a whole lesson to it. It's going to be too much. It's going to be too much. Mm -hmm. um, so we can skip 6-3. Six four common denominators and equivalent fractions. So this lesson, looking at it, so the least common denominator and write an equivalent fraction. So they're doing like five ninths and four fifteenths. And so then they're just they took the operation out of it and they're just simply coming up with two. I feel like that would be a good place to start, even for those higher kids. Mm -hmm. um, just simply because there are the ones in there with the missing denominators. Mm -hmm. um, I almost feel like it would be better to start with that than it would to just start with adding. Because this is like the foundational skill of what is the common denominator. Yeah. Versus 6, 1 and 6, 2. Versus actually jumping into adding and subtracting. Well, 6, 1 and 6, 2 is just, if we were to just take directly from Go Math, it's just the modeling. So we were going to combine this idea of modeling with doing then the operation with it. So then maybe doing teaching least common denominator with 6, 1 and 6, 2. So that, because these aren't, these aren't even mixed numbers. What is? For 6, 4? Yeah, this is just. No, it's just it's straight, straight up determining, determining common a common denominator. Oh, but I'd agree yeah, with you, Ashley. Six four should be first. I have your point too. Yeah. We saw, like, with the decimals and the models, the kids needed that standard algorithm piece first to even mm -hmm. be confident. So maybe if we start with 
letting them see the confidence in that they know what an equivalent fraction is and that they can make one, then go back to 6, 1, one and 6, two. 2. So I'm going to put that first. Start with 6, 4. And I'm going to put the notes in there. This is the intro to finding common denominators. Nice catch. So then 6, 5. 6, 5 is there adding and subtracting. So now they're, they're applying right into it. it. Yeah. But there so are no mixed numbers yet. It's just fractions. So then my question, we found with the models, with decimals, that most of our kids did better with the numbers before they had to figure out how to draw a picture. Would we go 6, 5, first 2? Because we know they have to be able to model, which is what 6, 1 and 6, 2 are for the test. Mm -hmm. But if we do 6, 4, 6, 5 and get the confidence and let them understand that they know how to do it, that way those those students who don't work well with visuals, maybe they can compose the answer first with the common denominator by simply using the numbers, and then we can help support them in how to draw a picture of what that would look like, just like we did with the decimals in base 10. Yes, because I, I agree, our, num our students prefer just to do the standard work, but I'm, I'm fearful that if we don't review back that fractions are, are portions of numbers or representations mm -hmm. of wholes and parts, I would be, I'm fearful that they're not going to have the concept of what a fraction is if we don't model it first. So um, you want to draw models first. Just so that, because I, I have a feeling that's the majority of what they did in fourth grade was modeling with the, the strips, because we each have those sets of strips within our classroom. They should have still added them mm -hmm. and um, subtracted them. So I don't know if we want to just do a brief introduction and then move on to doing 6-5 and then going back to 6-1-6-2. I'm just afraid, I'm thinking... So do a hands-on piece of showing them like this is a whole and mm -hmm. then this is what it would take. That I think would benefit them as like an intro to what they're going to be doing. Yes. Because yeah, my fear is if they have to draw it before they know exactly what they're doing, we're going to hit the same problem yeah. as the decimal. So, do we want to utilize 6 1 and 6 2's like visuals of the investigate piece, but save the rest of the lesson where they're drawing the models themselves for after 6 5? Yes, so do 6 1 and 6 2 introductions as the introduction to the unit. This is what we're going to be doing with the models. That makes sense, Ashley. So not starting with six four. No, we would we could start with six okay. four, but right before we do six four, just introduce the visual piece that this is a fraction, with like the fraction strips and the models. Okay. And then move into six four, so that they have that tie to it's it's a number, it's <laughs> not not a number. Um, and so only do those two investigate pieces where they've got the fraction strips up at the top of 6, 1 and 6, 2. And then I think incorporating them with that introduction piece of modeling, I think having a real world example of where they have dealt with fractions before or taking parts of a whole or combining parts of a whole. We can pull some examples maybe from GoMath or from DCAS questions where they are able to understand all this is what I'm doing like we always go back to the pizza problems but mm -hmm. honestly just showing them that okay so I have intro with what is a fraction using the fraction strips and models from 6 1 and 6 2 and move into 6 4 Then go from 6-4 to 6-5, where they're actually coming up with the common denominators and solving. Is 6-6 six, six subtraction? When they added the mixed numbers. Okay. Uh, okay. So I feel like we need more than one day to do 6-5. Yes. Before we jump into the mixed numbers. I guess we can lay out each of our resources and 
uh, divvy up the date afterwards. Yeah, we have 15 days. Yeah. Um, I, there is 17 from with where we have the test date. Um, so February 17th, I think it gives us 17 days based yeah. on like school closures or where it would fit. So we're going to do the assessment on the 17th. That's what's written up here at the top. Um, we can always adjust it back. I know from last year, adding and subtracting fractions was more difficult for the kids than the multiplying and dividing fractions. And we have 25 days for multiplying and dividing versus the 15. So we can always take some of the time from unit five. And interim two, uh -huh. does that have any of this unit in it, correct? No. Okay. Well, that's good. So we have intro with the fraction strips and go into 6-4, introduce 6-4, which is just coming up with common denominators, move into 6-5, but we're taking two days. Are we going to split addition and subtraction to each separate days? Are we going to combine them? I think we should continue combining and doing inverse operations to okay. check our work. Okay. And the reason I this. That. Utilize the inverse operations. Combine 6 1 and 6 2. So, would we bounce back at that point, back to 6 1 and 6 2, with drawing the models? Because they don't have, I see 6 1 doesn't have mixed numbers. And I don't think 6 2 has mixed numbers. So if before we hit mixed numbers, we go back to, hey, now you know how to add and subtract and find common denominators. Now let's look at how we would draw a model to represent that. Yeah. And then go into 6-6 six, six with mixed numbers. What do you think, Ashley? Yeah. I think the models are going to be important when we get into the regrouping piece, oh, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because some kids are not going to understand how they can regroup with a fraction, I feel like. Yes. So, that gets us through 6-5. Do we want to give, they have after 6-5 in here, they have the like midpoint check. Mm -hmm. We don't usually utilize those. Do we want at this point to make sure we throw in a SEPA? I don't think they'll be ready for the required SEPA, but we could pull in one of the other ones or pull in one of the DCAS questions that is simply over adding and subtracting mixed numbers. I would say after we do maybe 6 1 and 6 2 doing the required SEPA. You think they'll be ready for it? Because they have to use a number line. I don't know that they'll be ready for the number line. Oh, there. I'm looking at number question, um, fourth grade, the fourth grade one. I would that one work? I think this fourth grade fourth one grade would be good for the intro piece. Well, in for the intro or for the intro of the modeling, yes. Okay. So, so when do we want to give that one? Just like at the beginning, gather data to see what they know. Like when we give the unit check-in. So what fraction of the rectangle below is shaded? So that's going to go clear back to like a third grade standard when they were first introduced to fractions and they have to look at the coloring and say that it's 3 out of 12. And so they'd write 3 twelfths. And then Laura says that one fourth of the rectangle is shaded. Do you think she's correct? This actually might be really insightful to do with the unit check-in. Mm -hmm. Because they'll tell us first if they need help identifying what a fraction looks like in a picture, that third grade standard. And then part B goes into their reasoning explaining, but also the equivalent fractions that they have mm -hmm. to do in fourth grade. I agree. I think this would be beneficial to do when we do the unit check-in. Alright. The unit check-in is what? Three problems? 
It's three, but there are oh, three, three a few in each yeah. one. So it shouldn't take them long because mm -hmm. there's only three and then they add a part A and a part B. And then having this reasoning piece with it too is good practice for them as well. And then we can, as an introduction, we could do that, my favorite wrong answer, and discuss with some of the responses why they're correct or why, you know, why they justified incorrectly. Okay. I'm going to put that back in at the top. When do we want to give that piece? That's something I think we need scheduled now. We take unit three on Friday. Do we want to try and fit it in this next week before the test? Just let them know, hey, this is not a grade. We just want to see what you remember with fractions. Then it gives us time to plan interventions as we start the unit. So we could maybe do it on Wednesday because I'm sure Thursday we'll be reviewing for the test. Do we okay. want to give it? On Wednesday, we could. We have a little bit of filler time before counseling. Like mm -hmm. we get in from recess at twelve fifteen. Okay. Counseling is at twelve thirty. Maybe we could give it on whichever mm -hmm. day that we, we have, have counseling. Okay. So begin so with it. unit check in and what is this one? fractions and rectangles. So, going to the other SEPA, I don't think there's any lessons within Go Math that utilize a line, a line graph, except for um, the estimation piece. Which lesson was that one? I think it was three, six, three. So, do we have anything in Schoology or? Yeah, I didn't even see anything in here with like benchmark fraction, which is part of the standard. Um, because do they have a line graph question for their assessment too? They, yeah, they do have to interpret the line plot. That's a word we need to add to it. Is that what it says? No, but I'm just saying that that's what they're going to have to do. Whereas they're going to have to look at the data that's collected and be able to understand what the X's mean and then from there be able to do the operation. Okay. And for the SEPA, they need to be able to again just so that's a little bit different of a number. So that one's a number line. So the number lines represent the amount of nuts and fruit a student mixes together to make a trail mix. So you have the nuts in pounds, the fruit in pounds. What is the total amount of the mix, trail mix in pounds the student makes? So with our models, maybe because this is a model, maybe rather than just focusing on, I feel like having, when I taught fourth grade, we did the fraction strips and they drew those out. They came across more issues that they couldn't keep them proportioned correctly. Mm -hmm. What if we teach them, rather than drawing just a fraction strip, we teach them to draw it as a number line and break it apart, but maybe insert and tie the benchmark fractions to it by saying, okay, first take your number line and put it into benchmark fractions and make that half and fourth and three fourths and then how could you divvy it up if you have four eighths? Where else would the rest of your lines need to be? I um, think that'll benefit us also when we get into multiplying them if they already have the background knowledge of, of a number line because that's a really great strategy for multiplying fractions is using the number line. So focus. So include that in with the model piece when we like intro. I almost feel like that might be the only model. like. They don't have, at least in any of the DCAS questions I've seen, they don't have fraction strips as a model. They only have the line graphs, or like the line plots, the number lines. Mm -hmm. We could look further to see if we need any, like if they have like pictures like in the 
SEPA for fourth grade where they have the box. We can see yeah. if they have anything like that or if they use base 10 because that's on our unit check-in, isn't it? Base 10 pictures. Yeah. Question two has base 10 blocks. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to say that they're wrong on the unit check-in if they can add those together without using the base 10 blocks? Because it simply says solve. Like we might, we should be able to see that they can make five tenths into fifty hundredths and add those together because they did it in fourth grade. Are we going to want to see them put something in the box if it doesn't say? I feel like no, since it doesn't explicitly say you have to use the model. Mm -hmm. right. So with the model note we have up here, add a focus to the models for question six types of models we can focus on. So number lines. Line plot. The line plot's gonna represent the data. Yeah. But I guess well being able to interpret that those two things mm -hmm. are different. Right. So connecting different from a line plot. Okay. So I would say we start with a number line and then we can do more research into the DCAS questions and see if they have other models that they have to at least analyze to solve the problem. Um, that'll be helpful with the SEPA from fourth grade because if they struggle to analyze that box that's put in here and read the fraction, they're likely going to struggle with just a number line. Okay. What else do we need to add to go math? <laughs> There's no line plot lessons anywhere in here? Not that we've looked through so far, not that Are I remember. Chapter seven? I don't have my chapter 7 book. Seven. Chapter seven starts Chapter off seven. with multiplying yes, multiplying fractions. So we will look into that part further. So we'll look into line plots. Something else that I noticed that we need to look into just through flipping through, and maybe you've noticed this too, is for the assessment, they're required to do um, order of operations for some of the problems. And I haven't noticed any problems that they're gonna have to do that with within GoMath. Which problem? So, for example, like number one, where they have three sets of fractions that they're adding together. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a similar style question like that in Go Math. So, where they've got the three, where they have the three added and fractions. then knowing order of operations for the expression, um, because it's I mean there it's just addition and subtraction, but knowing from left to right, mm -hmm. and then once start we start with the two, addition, then subtract. Yeah. Okay. So make sure we throw in. So look into line plot lessons. Add in problems with three different fractions. The other one that I saw we're going to need to add in is DCAS has a question, the one I gave you, question 18, one of the release questions. The expression is written as 257 plus 18 over 25. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to understand that that just simply means 257 over 25 plus 18 over 25. So maybe we show questions written this way and teach them how to break that apart. Because looking at it, it says which expressions have the same value as the expression shown, and they have to select three. And so we really need to look more at this question 18 and the pieces that are required for. Yeah, because now they're going to have to re review and spiral back to order of operations with the parentheses 
um, the division. So I'm just going to put look into how to tie in question 18 from DCAS. Bank. I'm going to put of 2018. <laughs> But we can come back to this in a planning and look at it. Um, we can finalize our resources after we look into those pieces to see what all we need to use. Otherwise, I think. Do we, what about the rest of the Go Math chapters? Do you want to? Oh, yes. Lesson 6-6. Six, six. Six, so 6-6 six, six is subtracting, subtraction with renaming. Is that just regrouping? Six, six, uh -oh. six mixed numbers. Yeah. So how can you use renaming to find the differences of two mixed numbers? Mm -hmm. And so my guess is making it into, do they make it into an improper? I think yes. so. I think yep. that's a part of the regroup. So understanding that an improper fraction makes a mixed number. So you tie that relationship together. Six, seven. I think it's also the same thing, isn't it? Just to find it now? Yeah, it does have the estimation piece up above. Do we want to... It has some regrouping. Mm -hmm. Making it into an improper fraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say that lesson, because they have to do mixed to improper, mm -hmm. We focus solely on that and pull out the estimation piece so we don't overwhelm them because it's got estimate and then solve. I think we also need to make sure that we reteach how to make a whole number into a fraction. The last one is patterns with fractions. So three and a half, four and five, six, six and one six, seven and one twelve. This isn't something that they have to do. Um, we can look more into decals to see if they need these pattern pieces. I mean, but could this be beneficial if we did like line plotting? Take these numbers and make them into line plots. Yeah, so they can see the relationship with the distance that they visually yeah set, something like that uh, so we can look at later how to incorporate oops I apologize I put 6, 6 and 6, 7 in the last spot so look at 6, 8 incorporation if possible if not I would say we utilize that day as more line plot practice somewhere else. And then like we said, six, nine is the word problems. We're gonna incorporate those throughout in our lessons. We could do those with our number talks. Um, last one is 610 that I see. And that's properties of addition. So this might be a good one to They do see the three add-ins in these ones. Mm -hmm. So they end up, 610 would be a good enrichment piece for our high flyers because they've got the mixed numbers with the parentheses. And it would also help with solving the expressions correctly first. If we wanted to utilize these numbers to get them in the habit of solving what's in the parentheses first, which will tie back to all the other units that we've done and remembering order of operation. I also just noticed that 6-9 includes variables so we might need to add that into the vocabulary because it has them like solving for x and okay. m and writing equations. Okay. Did you see what I was talking about Emily with like utilizing the three different numbers and rather than just saying are you in 6 9 or 6 10? 6, six ten. Oh, you're in 6 10. That's the only one I see that's got three different fractions or mixed numbers. And it has them oh, adding them. But they're all, yeah, I was going to say they're all the same operation. Yeah. Maybe we could switch it up and take those and make some fractions. Take some of them mm -hmm. more similar to the assessment. Yeah. 
Okay. So I'll put that in there. It says use the properties in mental math. Mm -hmm. So make 610 problems, both addition and subtraction, and relate it back to expressions with order of operations. And we can even tie in the properties of addition that it mentions. Mm -hmm. They have to have that for the test. All right. Uh, I think that's all we have. We've got the lessons we have to teach, the ones we're going to look into, and then we can see what we have from DCAS and Schoology to fill those holes that Go Math doesn't fill. Mm -hmm. All right.